Today we're taking a closer look into Wi-Fi 7, but this year it feels a little different. Around a year ago we tried Wi-Fi 7 for a week and I said it was insane, kind of a little bit early. Since then I've basically lived with it, different routers, access points and now this thing, the Asus Tough Gaming BE9400. It's a Wi-Fi 7 router that costs around £160 that has features my iPhone 17 can't even take advantage of. So I want to show you what Wi-Fi 7 actually looks like a year later using this as an example to see where it's impressive and not useful at all. Everyone always flexes a speed test, but they are realistically limited by your internet service provider and not a full-on test of your router or access points. All of the following speed tests you're about to see are local speed tests on my local network that don't use the internet. I set up three different Wi-Fi networks on the BE9400. One for two, one for five, and one for six gigahertz. And yes, I test MLO, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. All of these tests were done with an iPhone 17 Pro connected directly to this router. 2.4 gigahertz has always been the use it only if you have to network. But on Wi-Fi 7, with this router, one year later, it really isn't terrible. On Wi-Fi 7 2.4 gigahertz, we were managing around 100 megabits down and 160 megabits a second up. This is on 2.4 gigahertz, absolutely mind blowing. The 2.4 gigahertz situation has gone from a please no to a okay, this is actually kind of acceptable now. Now, 5 gigahertz is where the word workhorse gets a little bit silly. This is where the majority of your devices are going to live. Think your smartphones as you roam around your house and your smart TVs. 5 gigahertz is the great middle ground for decent range and really acceptable speeds. On the B9400 at Wi-Fi 7 5 gigahertz we were seeing just under a gigabit, 900 megabits per second over Wi-Fi. And this is on a mid-range Wi-Fi router in the real world. But honestly, once you get close to gigabit over Wi-Fi, it stops being about the number and starts being more about how boring this feels. Because it just works so well. But what about 6 gigahertz? Now, this is the fun one. Cleaner airspace, less congestion and huge channel. On Wi-Fi 7 at 6 gigahertz, we're getting around 1.3 gigabits per second. Yes, that is absolutely wild for a £170 router. The catch, obviously the range. 6 gigahertz absolutely hates walls and physical objects, so you need a good signal strength to get good speeds over 6 gigahertz. But if you do, whew, it's fast. So we've got 2.4 gigahertz finally acting okay. 5 gigahertz has definitely reached maturity and 6 gigahertz is just blazingly fast, but what if we were to merge all of this stuff together with some tech called MLO? For MLO to work, not only the router has to be compatible with it, but your client device too, meaning your smart TV or your smartphone. If it's not, MLO won't work. Now you have to enable MLO on the BE9400 in a separate menu, and when you do it will combine your 2.4, 5 and 6 GHz networks into a single intelligent Wi-Fi network. This isn't the same as giving all three of your Wi-Fi bands the same SSID or network name. This is tech that makes all three of the bands work cohesively together. Using the MLO network on the iPhone 17, I was seeing about 1.4 to 1.5 gigabits per second. Now this isn't a massive increase over the standard 6 gigahertz speed, but peaking at 1.5 gig over Wi-Fi on an iPhone is absolutely crazy. Now I mention iPhone specifically here because we can't fully take advantage of this Asus router because iPhones and iDevices don't support the full 320 megahertz channel width. They only support 160. To make that a little simpler to understand, on this device here, we can use a highway on 6 GHz that has 320 lanes, but the iPhone can only use half of them, 160. That would be even faster if you had a device that fully supports 320 MHz channel bonding. So it's safe to say that Wi-Fi 7 tech and routers have come down in the price ranks over the last month as to be expected. So what else do you get with the BE9400? First 
off the ports. Most routers at this price will only give you one two and a half gig port, whereas every single port on this Asus device is two and a half gig, WAN and LAN. Second, gaming features, but don't let the word gaming put you off, these are actually quite useful. There's a dedicated port on the back of the router labeled gaming, and if you use this port, it will get priority over the rest of the network. Really helpful if you've got a busy house with loads of devices connected. If you had a weak internet connection, for example, you could connect the gaming port to your smart TV and use the gaming port to prioritize the Netflix stream going to that smart TV. Not necessarily a gaming feature, but yes, you can use that gaming port. Plus, if you are a gamer, you can use the open NAT feature to make things like port forwarding a little bit easier so you can maintain that open NAT status within your game. As well as all the other nice to haves that you get when you pick up an Asus router. Setup was completely seamless. I even tried it using the mobile app on my phone and I was set up within about 30 seconds. It walked me through connecting WAN, setting up my Wi-Fi, and I was good to go. Setup on PC was just as easy, and here you get a nice list of options as to how you would like to set the router up. Want to have this thing as just an access point or a Wi-Fi repeater? Yeah, you can do that. Got a love Asus for this setup process. You can also go in and create separate networks for things like IoT or have a separate network that you can pause that your kids are on, for example. And last but not least, you've got AI Mesh. So if you have an old Asus router laying around, you could use that or this as an extendable mesh point to grow your Asus ecosystem and extend your wireless coverage. So who is this device actually for? And it's really easy to put a finger on that. Basically everybody. It has the latest and greatest Wi-Fi 7 technology over all three of the bands. You're future proofed with your wires too, two and a half gig on all of the ports on the back. If you need more ports, you can go ahead and get a two and a half gig switch. You're still off to the races. The range is great, the speeds are great, and for 170 quid, this technology has now definitely matured and we have reached peak router. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed. My name's been Alex and I'll see you in the next one.